Hey guys, welcome back to the off-grid cabin out here at St. Bernard Acres. This is May 31st, last day of May. Man, unbelievable. Hope everybody had a safe and decent Memorial Day. We remembered what the day was for. Uh, everybody was out here yesterday. We cooked out and you know, had some family time, which is what this property's for. And I didn't shoot any videos, it was just all us. It, you know, there wasn't, that wasn't what I, I don't consider those kind of things, you know, video opportunity. <laughs> As private time with the family. And, uh, it went, you know, we had a good time. Today's topic that I want to talk about. You know, the big thing now is prepping. Every, everybody's a prepper. Every channel that I've subscribed to, all the homesteading channels that I learned from, you know, the off-grid channels that I learned from, well, now they're all prepping experts because that's the big thing. And uh, I find humor in a lot of that. I, I practice prepping. I mean, we have things in place. I don't broadcast it. I don't advertise it. Um, I'm constantly learning, constantly adding to the stuff as I see it, you know, and the opportunities there to add to my preps. I will do it. But, I mean, I don't live my life for it. <laughs> and one of the things I see a lot of these channels that are doing, and I think it's, it's not fair to do it to people, but they talk about bug out locations. And if you don't have a bug out location, then you can't be a prepper. And that's just wrong. I, I hate when they say that. Or they're, you know, if you don't have all this stuff like, you know, I got 10 years where the food stocked up. Okay, good for you. Realize it's not too late to start prepping. This is going to be a bad summer. I mentioned it in another video. This is going to be trying times, the summer of 2022. It's already starting out bad, and it's only going to get worse. So, what I think people need to concentrate on prepping, and the, the not prepping for the end of the world as we know it, or the big earthquake and volcanoes and you know I think you need to look at prepping and the way I look at it I prep for a disruption of my normal life you know something beyond my control interrupts my normal life I need to be prepared for that be whatever it is and I, you know, I'm good for a few months. I don't think it will, in, no matter what happens, it's not going to last for 10 years. You know, you're not going to be able to go hide in the woods for 10 years. You're not going to need to, let me put it that way. Uh, unless you want to be a hermit. You know, you can try that, but that's not going to work. You can't hide. Those days are over. There is no hiding. Um... What I would encourage people to look at prepping and what I would encourage them to strive for, you know, sit down with your family. You just need basic things. And what I try to tell people, you know, because prepping still has some bad content. People think of doomsday preppers and all your nuts, you know. Before, if I ever mentioned St. Bernard Acres as being a bug out location, people, okay, stay away from Waller, he's nuts. Now, everybody wants one, you know. Uh, that's not what I bought this place for, I bought it to retire to, but it is also, it has a dual purpose now. And I'm very lucky there. But, what I would suggest to people is, come up with a two week plan. Come up with a two-week menu of what you would do if you didn't leave your house. Could you 
feed yourself and live for two weeks without having to leave your house and go to a store? That's the question. You know, that's the goal to get started, in my opinion. If you were set up like that to where you could go two weeks, you would probably be better off and better prepared than 95% of the country. Because no matter what happens, about 95% of the country is going to be standing there with their hands out waiting on the government and waiting on FEMA. Not being able to take care of themselves, not being able to know what to do to take care of themselves. You know, so two weeks is not a lot and it wouldn't cost a lot of money. I know things keep going up and it gets, you know, harder and harder, but you still have to do that. You still need to get yourself set up for a couple of weeks. And the way I've looked at it, because I don't make a lot of money. We are not rich people. We don't have unlimited funds. <laughs> if you get your initial two weeks set up and you feel comfortable, and a fun test, after you say, okay, I've got two weeks worth of stuff here. A fun test to do and get the family involved is pick a three-day weekend or three days in a you know seventy-two hour period. Turn off the power to your house and go that seventy-two hours like that. At the end of that seventy-two hours, turn your power back. You know, go back to normal. But then you can sit down and look at at your situation. And say, okay, I should have had this. I'm going to need this. I didn't think about this. Okay, this stuff we don't need after all. That will help you refine your list and get it more to what you need. And then once you have your two weeks, then every month, try to add a week to it. And in six months time, you've got two months worth of, of preps. Keep rotating everything. But then you're set. You, you know, I mean, if you could go 90 days, it'd be perfect. You don't have to have a bug out location. 98% of the people are going to have to shelter in place no matter what happens. You know, so get yourself set up. If you have a bug out location and you have to bug out if the need occurs... You know, there are certain things, if you're looking for a bug out location, and if you're still lucky to buy one, you know, it's got to have a water source, got to have a power source, be it solar or whatever, be it well or ring catchment. You know, ideally you have a plot where you could have a little garden going, depending on how long you're going to have to stay there. So, you know, that's, you can find out about bug out cabins and locations on other videos. Or I might do one later about how I kind of set up here you know this is more going to, once I move out here permanently then I will be sheltering in place there is no bug out for me from this point I refuse to leave um, I, and I just don't see things coming down the way all of these other people are talking with their gloom and doom and panic and scare you they just ride right along with the media. They don't even realize they're doing it. And uh, they're just scaring people just like they say the media is doing or the politicians are doing. And all you guys, I'm talking to you preppers now with your big channels and everything. You all say the same thing. One person says it, you all watch it, so then you all spread it. So, you know... I'm saying, take care of the little guy. Take care of yourself. Don't, you know, depend on what somebody tells you you have to do. Sit down with your family and you decide. But just try to give yourself a couple of weeks. That's all. Test yourself once. See what it's like. Make it a family project, you know. Um, have some fun with it, but realize it's a serious thing. I'm not going to try to make light of it. But I don't think you... you I think you're, if you're watching some of these other channels, you're being disserviced, if I will, if I can, if I may. Um, because it's frustrating. You can't do like them. 
And they want you to do like them. I don't want you to do like me. I want you to do what works for you, but I want you to think about it. If you have questions, you can ask questions, or if you want ideas, you know, there's billions of it out there. But you sit down with your family, and you come up with your own plan, but come up with a plan. Will it be like mine? No. It won't fit in my situation. Your plan won't work for me. My plan is not going to work for you. This is a personal thing that you have to decide what to do. You know? Don't rely on YouTube to teach you how to survive out in the forest for two years. That's not going to happen. Very few of us, and I count myself as not one of those very few, are survivalists. Nor do I want to become a survivalist and live in the wild. I don't want to do that. You know, it's just... I, I, half of these people who say that's what they are, they probably die within 72 hours. <laughs> you know? Because, they, you know, they, they live in this fantasy world. But don't put yourself in a position where you have to hold your hand out to the government and wait for them. Or wait for the FEMA truck to bring you some food. Try to help yourself out, your family out, so it'll be a lot more comfortable. You know, you don't want... There's already going to be this disruption in your life. Try to make it as easy as possible on the kids. That's all I'm trying to tell you to do. I hope this makes sense. I had so many things I wanted to say about this. I know I forgot half of them. Because I don't script anything, so... That's probably my fault. One thing I want to mention, if you're still around. This is kind of like sponsored by, but it's not really sponsored by. A friend of mine, Ron Foster, an author. Look him up on Amazon. He's got some really cool books. One book that is a lot of fun. It's full of ideas full of them and it's definitely worth going through these books and, and getting ideas you can learn a whole lot more from these books than you can from a YouTube channel because YouTube's going to be gone if SHTF happens have some books around to help teach you this is one of my favorites I love this book Old Fart Survival Guide. And it's just so easy to read and, and, you know, in simple terms. He doesn't make you, he doesn't talk down to you or, or like a lot of these people do. They'll try to talk down to you. Tell you you have to do it their way. Otherwise, it's not going to work. No. He's just telling you things that happen, things that work. You can take all of his ideas and modify them easily to your particular situation. That's the secret to it. I love that old fart survival guide. Another one that I really, really like is the bug out gardening guide. Great. Great stuff in there. You know, it's not for your farm on your homestead. This is just good, solid or information that you need to read. It's good to have that book. And he also does a lot of fiction. Uh, survivalist, aftermath, SHTF things, you know, uh, uh, surviving, <laughs> surviving on a boat is one of his, his uh, series. Um, but The Longest Walk. It's great. It's really good stuff. And it's good reads. It's easy reads. You'll enjoy them. I highly recommend Ron Foster's books. They're not that much money. Support that guy. He really, he's got some good stuff. He's got a Facebook page, a group, you know, uh, his survival group. You know, but he's not going to tell you, you know, what you have to do to survive. He's going to give you ideas and things that you can take this as your core and realize, okay, this is one of the things I need to do. Now, how am I going to make this work for me? How can I modify this plan 
to make it personal for me. That's what you get from these kind of books. You know, Dave Canterbury's got some good books on survival and, and, and bushcrafting and woodcrafting. I've got those books. These are going to be around long after shit hits the fan and there's no more internet or YouTube to learn from. We're still going to have all these guides, gardening guides. You get those kind of books, you know. That's my suggestion. But anyway, I took up enough of your time. You don't need a bug out location to become prepared. And you have to start working on being prepared. Time is getting short. You can feel it in the air. Something's coming. Don't stress out over it. Just add a few things every week. Just start saying, okay, let me get a few extra of this, a few extra of this. Oh, this is on sale. Buy five for two dollars. Buy the five of them. They're there. You know, it makes sense to do it that way. You need food. You need water. Think of a different way to cook to prepare that food. Maybe you're not going to have your electric stove. So think about things like make sure you got to take propane for your grill if that's what you need. You know. Um, I'm getting ready to do my next video as far as along this theme goes. Is are you ready for the rolling blackouts that's going to hit everybody this year? It's coming. And you're going to go in peak periods when you need power, you're going to have none. It's not going to be available. There are steps you can take to help you get prepared for that. Not cheap. Not overly expensive, but just some ideas you need to keep in the back of that brain. That, okay, I'm going to have to get ready for this because we're all going to suffer them, I think. From now on out, we're going to have rolling blackouts and brownouts and all kinds of outs. We're all going out, period. But, uh, I hope you get some information. Give me some ideas. I need ideas, too, on what I should do. How I can, you know, help myself in situations. That's pretty much it. I'm just killing time out here in the cabin. It's too damn hot to go out there and work. Uh, and it, it, it came on with a fury, didn't it? The heat and humidity. Oh my gosh. I'm about to head down to the barn and roll the generator up here. Because I can run the uh, air conditioner on the generator. Knock some of the heat and dry this out in here a little bit. Gary and I will be out here Friday. I'm going to finish up all the paneling and start cutting all my trim for the windows. Uh, get this place in shape. This is going to be 90% done in the next month. We'll finish the ceiling, seal it all up, get all the trim up, all the paneling up, and get my shed out here and build my power room to move all this stuff out behind the shed. Or use the, the shed to add on a room to this. I don't know. Hang around. Find out. I, you never know what I'm going to do. If anything. But I hope you all had a good weekend. Safe weekend. And I hope you have a wonderful week. I'm out.